What is moral identity? The term moral here is used as an adjective describing the noun identity. In this context, the term moral relates to the principles of what is considered right or wrong behavior. On the other hand, identity is simply what you think about yourself and what aspects in living your life are important to you. From the given descriptions of the individual terms moral and identity, it can be described that moral identity is the level of personal importance that you give in what you deem as acceptable or unacceptable behavior. In this discussion, we will investigate the factors that help form the Filipino moral identity. We will also learn about the strengths and weaknesses of identified Filipino characteristics. Psychologist, educator, and former chairperson of the Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Patricia Liquanan, in her 1994 study wrote that the strengths and weaknesses of the Filipino character are rooted in factors such as the home environment, the social environment, culture and language, history, the educational system, religion, the economic and the political environment, mass media, and the country's leaders and role models. How do these factors shape the Filipinos' concept of right or wrong behavior? Perhaps the most influential factor in shaping the Filipino moral identity is the family. In Filipino culture, family bond is not just within the core family of a father, mother, and siblings. Bonds with extended families such as grandparents, aunts, and uncles, as well as cousins, no matter how distant the degree, is not only strong but is encouraged to be maintained and strengthened. Moreover, developing a close relationship with extended families cover both from the mother and father's side. According to Liquanan, early on, Filipino children are taught to value family and give it primary importance. Another factor that influences Filipino moral identity is the social environment. Filipino social environment is characterized by depending on one another to survive and since the family is also a Filipino's foundation for social life, dependence on relationships, and the struggle for survival make Filipinos group-oriented. Filipinos are also cheerful and fun-loving. Even in the most trying time, Filipinos will always find a reason to smile or laugh. Philippine fiestas and social gatherings demonstrate Pinoy joy and humor. We can laugh with those we love and those we hate. And we can make jokes about our good and bad fortune. Pakikipagkapwa tao is one of the strengths of the Filipino character. What is character? A definition of character fitting to our discussion is from Ryan Webster that states, It is a complex or interrelated parts of mental and ethical traits marking and often individualizing a person, group, or nation. The Filipino character of pakikipagkapwa tao is demonstrated in an openness, helpfulness, generosity, the practice of bayanihan or mutual assistance the famous Filipino hospitality, and our love for family. However, extreme personalism and extreme family-centeredness are also weaknesses of the Filipino character. In her study, Dr. Liquanan noted that Filipinos function in the world by personally relating to things, events, and people, thus making it difficult to separate objective tasks and emotional involvement. This is where the Palakasan system spring from. For example, Family and friends are given preference in hiring, in the delivery of services, and even in voting someone into government office. Personal connections also make it difficult to turn down requests of any kind. The Kanyakanya syndrome is also related to extreme personalism and extreme family centeredness where self interest is supreme. The Kanyakanya syndrome dampens our sense of community and cooperation, and we trample on others' rights as a result. You should know by now though that the Filipino concept of self actually includes one's family as well as an in-group or an inner circle. Thus, the drive to fulfill self-interest is a manifestation of extreme personalism and extreme family-centeredness. The family may be a source of strength for Filipinos, but extreme family-centeredness is also our flaw. Since family is valued above all, concern for the community 
and for the common good take lesser importance. Extreme family centeredness is manifested in our political system where political dynasties lord over elected government posts starting from the barangay level to the city, province, and all the way to national positions. Dr. Liquanan also observed that the joyful and fun-loving Filipino has a tendency to be superficial and somewhat flighty. This means that in times of crisis, either personal or social, there is a lack of analysis or reflection. A manifestation of this lack of analysis and reflection is the expression madaling makalimot, where Filipinos are characterized as a nation with a short memory. A nation who forgets the mistakes made or the ills done to the people. And thus, Filipinos tend to commit the same mistakes again. Ever wonder why trapos or traditional politicians are re-elected into office? One factor is a Filipino's short-term memory and forgiving nature. A majority of Filipinos never learn his or her political lessons. Another factor that shapes the Filipino's moral identity is culture and language. The Filipino culture is a mix of both Eastern and Western cultures. The beliefs and traditions of pre-colonial Philippines were mainly indigenous Malay heritage. And while the natives occupying the different parts of the archipelago were subjugated by one colonizer after another, the natives' ancient beliefs and traditions have mostly been merged with colonizers and eventually evolved into what we now know as the Filipino culture. Meanwhile, in language, though the main elements are still Filipino and English, the way Pinoys speak these days is a mix and mash of foreign languages having Japanese and Korean expressions spicing it. Filipino culture and language show openness to foreign elements. However, Liquanan observed that the Filipino trait of openness and acceptance to foreign cultural elements is also paired with a trait of having no basic consciousness of a cultural core of being a Filipino. The importance of the English language in our educational system even after we gained independence from the U.S., and even before English was considered a global language, is a manifestation of the Filipinos' very favorable perception of America. Have you noticed the wider Filipino following of Hollywood movies and actors, as well as foreign films, as compared to Filipino films? Filipinos spanning generations wildly followed anime, Mexican novellas, as well as Taiwanese and Korean drama over local TV series. There is also our love for foreign music and singers over local talents. In fact, foreign music icons helped shape each generation of Filipinos. Pinoy boomers had Elvis Presley and the Beatles. Pinoy Gen Xers had Michael Jackson and Madonna. Millennials Mariah Carey and Beyonce. And the iconic example for Filipinos of this generation is the K-pop. Scholars, including Liquanan, attributed the Filipino preference for all things foreign over one's own to the history of colonization and oppression, thus the term Filipino colonial mentality, where Filipino creation, product, and even the way of life is deemed poorly made, inferior, or low standard compared to those from other countries, particularly Western countries, an inferiority complex that is still very much present in Filipinos today. The Filipino elite are of no help in setting an example of overcoming colonial mentality as most are very westernized in their ways. So too are the people involved in Philippine mass media such as the broadcast, showbiz, and ads industry. The created trends of these industries reinforce Filipino colonial mentality. Other highly instrumental factors in character formation and consequently Filipino moral identity are the Philippine educational system and religion. Schools and religion are both authoritarian systems. Early on, as children, Filipinos learn in school and in church that being well-behaved and obedient is positively reinforced and the opposite behavior is punished. These authoritarian systems help build resilience, but at the same time, it also teaches passivity and conformity as well as a fatalistic attitude. 
attitude. The Filipino's bahala na mindset is an example of our fatalistic attitude. However, there is a positive side to this trait because for Filipinos, a bahala na attitude can also be a pampalakas loob or a kickstarter to move the Filipino into action. Filipino resilience is definitely a lot of help given the Philippines' economic environment. The economic environment is another element that Dr. Liquanan identified where Filipino moral identity is rooted. The Philippine economic environment, for its part, is also highly affected by factors such as overpopulation, mismatch between skills and job requirement, and immense corruption in government, among others. The hard life experienced by Filipinos in the Philippines pushed a lot of Pinoys to take risks such as leaving their families to work abroad. Hard work, industry, and the ability to survive are strong Filipino traits. Visalawikain, or proverb, matutong mamaluktot habang maikli ang kumot, aptly depicts our survival instinct. We can endure, make do, and get by on so little while looking forward to the coming days. This trait is the reason why Filipinos can carry on through harsh economic and social circumstance, an example of which is Pinoy resilience amidst the uncertainties that this COVID pandemic inflicted. Unfortunately, the country's political environment as well as government structures and systems are fraught with problems. For instance, the fact that political power is mainly in the hands of elites as well as having no strong government presence, particularly in the most basic government unit like your barangay, your city, or your province, enhance the Filipinos' already extreme family-centeredness. How is your barangay captain and kagawads related to each other or to your city mayor or councillors? And how are they also related to your governor or board members or your representatives in Congress? Are government services in your area given fairly without bias? The continued rule of the country's elite can also be attributed to the Filipinos' high respect for authority. Our high respect for authority also led to a character of general passivity and lacking initiative. For instance, there is a strong reliance on leaders and government to solve the nation's problems, but Filipinos also do not feel the need to initiate or contribute to the solution. Notice how Filipinos dispose of garbage? This negative Filipino trait is also related to our lack of discipline. Notice our road traffic problem? Filipinos expect the government to solve our monstrous traffic jam, yet rules and regulations are blatantly ignored every day. Filipinos lean on leaders and role models, starting from authority figures in our families and extending to authority figures in the society. Thus, when leaders or role models violate the law and there is lack of accountability for those who broke the law, the level of personal importance that Filipinos give in the goodness or badness of one's behavior is hugely negatively affected. The Filipino character is a contradiction. For example, our Bayanihan culture coexists comfortably with our Kanya Kanya syndrome. Many of our strong points are linked to our weaknesses. Despite these weaknesses, however, there is still much good in the Filipino character. What about you? What positive Filipino trait can you most relate to? And how has this trait helped make you become a better person?